Hi right, guys, Hatch Crabber here and today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. And ahead of the final weekend of Major 3 qualifiers, it appears one of the worst ever individual runs by a player in the CDL is potentially coming to a rather swift end. Vegas have apparently made the decision. A seam, after joining the team just a few weeks ago, is now going to be gone straight out of the starting roster back to challengers. The player, though, they're looking to replace him with may well come as quite a surprise. What is going on at that camp? Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I greatly appreciate it. Also, my thought for Paris as well, all the progress that he's made over the last several months. Before we get into all the roster drama, how about this from the Esports World Cup? So, there used to be a tourney called Gamers 8 over there in Saudi Arabia and they've effectively rebranded that to the Esports World Cup from this year and beyond. Now, there are several games that have been announced to be going on here. Call of Duty is not one of them. Although, there have been speculation that that may happen either this year or in the future. Not as like the COD World Championship is going to be there, although I wouldn't actually rule out that possibility over the coming seasons. More so, there'll be some sort of COD thing happening, whether it's, you know, two pros, two ams or whatever. I know there's been some ideas that have been thrown around. Probably not for this year, but I'm pretty sure Overwatch is going to be there, or at least there's some Microsoft games that are now under Microsoft Activision Blizzard that are going to be there. So I think Activision would never want to approve this type of stuff, but I think that Thing times have changed, maybe, maybe the money is just too good to refuse. Now, there have been many kind of, let's say, CDL or CDL affiliated in the case of, let's say, FaZe Clan, because not Atlanta FaZe, it's FaZe Clan, but it's close enough, that have been announced as actually attending the event. So these are the five that are CDL affiliated, FaZe, 100 Thieves, G2, which is Rocker, KLY, which is ultra related in the overactive media header, and then, of course, Falcons, Saudi Arabian team that are involved in the European Challenger side. Now, no optic here, which was... To me, kind of surprising just because we've seen Scumpers talked about the event. They've talked about it on the Optic shows. I think they've done some promotion for the event. So kind of unclear why Optic aren't here. Maybe there is part of it because Optic just aren't involved in that many esports, right? They don't have the wide, you know, spread and depth that maybe they're used to when they have their Counter-Strike team and, you know, they no longer have a Valorant team. Didn't they get rid of their Apex team recently as well? So I think it's pretty much just like Halo and COD for Optic right now. And therefore, there's been talk as well, you know, eight teams were selected through the open application process and then 22 were invited or some sort of private application process. So yeah, a little bit interesting. I guess we'll see updates on that over the coming months. Of course, the event is set for midsummer. I'm pretty sure sometime. But also before we dive into the Asim stuff, there's been some drama again on the challenger side as always. And to be fair, even drama in challenges as a result of the Asim stuff. We talked about the prize money yesterday. Players have apparently now been accidentally paid out for Boston a second time instead of getting paid for Miami. So Rotation and, and those guys were kind of saying, oh, I'm going to second, guys. It's been quite some time since the Boston Open event and certainly already quite some time since Miami. So are you guys going to pay the money that these guys are owed for the results and challenges? And they probably thought, oh, yeah, we probably should get to that. And when they did, they've paid the wrong amount. So, yeah, people are kind of confused what's happening here, even as Bant says, who do I call? contact for Miami payments. You know, I need that right now. So yeah, it's kind of wild. There's also drama with regard to the subliners because they released their academy roster just before the event. So this caused a lot of drama last night. So Mock, Mumba and uh, Nimentions, I believe, players that were on that roster and a change was made. One of their players left just before and therefore New York have potentially taken that as like a loophole to cancel the whole thing. So they voided their contracts. They've canceled their bookings. The guys don't even know whether there's going to, you know, whether they still have a pass for the event at this point. So, yeah, bit of a shambles, to be fair. This is what Mike Apox says. My team and I had our flights and hotel cancelled as well as contracts terminated nine days before the Toronto Major by New York. All of this is within the contract, but without warning, it's straight up scummy. Can't find consistency in the scene. So... I think that was kind of what happens here is that one of the players left without permission effectively breached the contract, which then opened the door to New York to effectively just void the contract and call it a day, which is, you know, business. And I guess they thought that this team didn't have much hope at that point, so why bother? But um, it's still just not a great look, right? And this is just why it's difficult to be in challenges. There isn't much return for the teams, let alone often the players as well. I think there is an argument to say that certainly now we maybe move into more like a partnership model rather than a franchising model where you actually have to pay money to enter. There probably should be a mandatory academy team. I think that would be an ideal scenario, but teams aren't going to 
do it rarely, apart from Boston and a couple of other examples, on a consistent basis because there just isn't really the return. Toronto and Boston, however, having done so over the last few years, have found players that have become rather valuable to their franchises. Certainly in Toronto's case, Boston, I think, have done a good job as well. But there's not really too much more information on that. What we do have, however, is on the Las Vegas Legion because these guys, they were looking pretty solid when they had Purge in their roster. They did have, it's got to be admitted, a relatively easy run during Major 2. They played easier teams, but they finished, what was it, 5-2, and two, didn't they, that stage? They came top 8 at the Major, arguably should have been top 6, you know, Game 5, Round 11. Purge, they made that mistake on the Invasion Surge. And there's an argument to say, and I know that Trey made this point on last night's Dope Check show, that if Vegas made the decision then and there to get rid of Purge after Major 2 in Miami, that probably would have ended far better because they would have had the time to work with the scene for two and a half weeks before the start of the Major 3 qualifiers to see if it was working and to get a seam up to speed in the roster. What Vegas eventually did was they played one week of games with Purge in the Major 3 qualifiers. They won one of those series. They lost the other in Game 5 to the Los Angeles Thieves and then they blew it up and replaced Purge with the seam. That gave a seam very little time to adapt to the system, gave Vegas very little time to analyse whether he was actually the right player in the first place and it's been an absolute mess. So whether getting a seam in for Purge was the right call, obviously it wasn't, but if they'd have made that decision when they arguably should have done, if they were going to make a move, then it probably would have ended better for all parties. So this was the rumour last night. We'll get on, of course, to O Johnny or Johnny, whatever you want to say, in a second. There was another player called Johnny way back in the uh, pre-CDL days, so that's kind of why people say O Johnny. But anyway, a seam is gone. That's the rumour that um, a seam's out of there, and I think this was an inevitability. I feel bad for a seam. He's a likeable guy, right? Everyone knows this. And he's obviously getting clown on hard. He did a tweet the other day that he's now deleted, maybe just because he got so much backlash in the replies. But, you know, stats are stats, numbers are numbers, and a seam, for whatever reason, just doesn't tend to perform that well at this time of the season. We know that a seam's good early on. He has positive attributes as a player, and he's a champion at the end of the day, right? He's won, you know, LAN events in his career. Los Angeles Grillers, Major 2 Vanguard was pretty wild, but he did, of course, get the victory there. But for whatever reason, he can't seem to maintain that level, and the teams that he's been on in the CDL era have largely been pretty bad most of the time. So then picking up a seam, I thought was, you know, fair enough to give it a go, but it hasn't worked out. The numbers are ugly. I mean, he hasn't had a single positive map. The team has massively regressed. Even the play of his teammates with a seam on the roster isn't working. I've got to feel there's got to be some sort of difference between their practice and their matches for it to be at this level. Like, you know, what we see on game day can't be what happens in practice because otherwise, surely, he wouldn't have even lasted three weeks. But, um, yeah, a seam is going to be gone, it seems. I think this was this had to happen, right? Vegas have regressed big time. They were in a position to be, what, a top six team in the game probably at one point. They were looking very good to make the World Championship. They've now won zero maps in their last four series. And, you know, this card, people say it was in bad taste or whatever, putting this out during the middle of the stage. But, of course this ends up being his final cast because now he's gone and I feel like everyone kind of predicted that was probably going to be happening. And this is also a pretty historic moment. Like as, as ugly as it is for a seam, this is going to be the worst player card we've basically ever seen. This is the worst stint of a player probably ever in the league on a permanent basis. Okay, there have been players that have subbed in and got slammed for one or two series, but this was a permanent move. He joins in the middle of the Major 3 qualifiers. He gets dropped before the end of the Major 3 qualifiers, right? Like, it's never really happened quite like this. He's played three weeks of qualifiers, won zero maps, and to be fair, the series they've lost to, they've lost to New York, they've lost to FaZe, they've lost to Optic. They've got 3 0 every time, and it hasn't been close. And with Purge, They've played Toronto close earlier on this season, Vegas, and they got 3 0 by Surge as well, which obviously looking back is particularly ugly. So, you know, I think a seam going is not a surprise. I don't think they, you know, were ever going to keep him going into the major. And we saw them make a move, as I say, after one weekend of qualifiers. So I think they're making a move again now makes a lot of sense. The question was who are they going to get instead? Are they going to bring Purge back? Because. I think it's quite clear that Purge added a lot to that team. They probably understood this at the time, but their feeling was that, well, Purge, 
you know, we can do better on an individual basis with a seam, and a seam can do the same, you know, leadership, comms, space making, or whatever that Purge brought to the table. Turns out he can't, seemingly. So, what about bringing Purge back? Apparently, they included or they, you know, evaluated the return of Purge, but they've decided not to do so. And it's not like Purge has gone down to challenges, has been crushing it. Like his team with FaZe Black, when he was on there, you know, and he's now no longer on there because the seam has replaced him, but they haven't done so well with Purge down there. And I still think he's a good player. And if he was to come back into Vegas, they probably would get better. Would they get back what they had? I'm not so convinced. So I can understand Vegas wanting to take a different route. I also think their decision making there as an organization has been so bad like they completely cut purge on very little evidence that a scene was going to be an upgrade so the purge situation contractually gets kind of funky because they've got to pay him two months like severance pay to get rid of him and now they've got to probably do the same for a seam and who knows what's going to happen to the next player but johnny is rumored to be back they considered hixie as well but um like legion there's no way they're ever going to get a, a visa together are they let's be real and i do think hixie deserves a spark back in there you actually think he could be in, in many ways pretty much the perfect player for a team like this but that ain't gonna happen they're getting johnny in so johnny if you guys remember was on vegas before he was on that team alongside jimbo famously during the vanguard season and he was okay i mean he was not good the team was terrible but um he was okay and he's not really been a name in challenges that's been particularly going around the circles although he did get seconds just the other day and has been playing very well aggressive player but i johnny is not the same player that per in many ways like Johnny to me is not going to bring the communication the leadership you know the strat calling whatever that Purge was doing I don't think Johnny's going to be that guy so they're now taking a slightly different approach with their team which may work if you want Johnny to be like a vivid because I think it may be in an ideal world this team would get a guy like vivid in because at least vivid and Nero Sure, you can debate the merits of that SMG duo, but it has worked in the past at times. Okay, it doesn't work all the time, but some of the time on that Boston team, it worked very well indeed. So maybe Vivid, but Vivid's taking a break from competing right now. So maybe that's the plan here for Vegas is to get someone who's kind of similar, bring Johnny in and hopefully it works. One of the quite incredible results here was the fact that Asim has now replaced Purge twice in the matter of weeks because Purge then got dropped from Phase Black for Asim to come back in there, which was inevitable. I'm sure that Asim's going to go down to challenges and do a commendable job. And Purge has now gone with Awakening Kami and Yees. So there was some reaction here actually from Zuma just talking about this the fact that you know he said in a tweet I want to make this very clear that with any roster changes going on with the CDL or face clan back I didn't talk to anyone the players decide it's not like Zuma's made the call to get a scene back in I just don't understand it I'm seeing people comment saying that this guy did it it was the same thing when Asim went back down to challengers and he got picked up again okay I didn't do anything with that. He went to Challengers, he won an event, and was one of the best players on his team. So a professional team reached out to him and picked him up. At night, there was no in-between combos. There was nothing going on. There was nothing there. There was nothing fucking there. And, and, and everybody got their wish, right? Everybody got their fucking wish, right? They, they made team changes again. Boom. They got their wish. Bro, I'm going to be hands-off. I, I even told... I've been saying this. I'm going to be super hands off. I'm just going to watch from afar. It, that's why I let Lowe's kind of do the, the Lowe's could do his thing. He could talk with the team, do their thing. I stay far away from it because I don't control this shit, bro. I don't control. I don't know who you guys think I am, bro. Guys, you really think me? 423 Luigi's got the power to build these, te to build these teams? Bro, players want to play with certain players. I don't fuck. I can't control that shit. I can't fucking control that shit. You know what I'm saying? You're the commish. You're the mafia. What do you think I'm doing? Breaking fucking knees? What do you think? Exceed don't want to play with Ace. Matter of fact, get Exceed. I want him in my fucking office. I want him in my fucking office now. Get Exceed. You think that's how I'm talking? Tie him up, throw him in a bathroom, I want to talk to him. Get fucking Exceed now, I want to fucking talk to him. Tie him up. I guess one of the big questions now is, will Asim get another opportunity in the CDL? Is that it for him? He's been on six teams now in the last five years. They've been generally very poor. I think this stint is going to be pretty deadly. We said it before Asim joins. If this doesn't work out, it might be over for him in terms of the CDL, his CDL career. And the stint has ended up being arguably far worse than anybody really imagined. So, yeah, where he goes next... 
back to challenges, grind it out probably down there for the rest of the year. And I still think that because of the relationships he has with other pros, it's not completely over yet for him. But, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't even be surprised if he comes back. But I'd be surprised if he comes back into the league and actually does well on a team in the future. I think that, you know, those days might be gone. So very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. They do play Boston this Saturday with that new Las Vegas Legion team, presumably with Johnny back on it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.